Hello everyone, and welcome back to this Lord of the Rings Minecraft mod adventure. I am LeftClick, and we just found a cavern in our Gondorian mine. I skipped past a lot of the mining sequences. I got just over a stack of coal and just over a stack of iron, which is nice because we'll have some coal left over in case we want to make any elven steel for our people. But overall, I think we're going to save this location as a place to mine since it is a somewhat nice cavern. So I am going to put... Gondorian Cavern here. And then we're going to head back up to the surface and call on our soldiers to head back home. I uh, will leave the way open for us so we don't get confused. And as you'll notice, I like doing this thing where in a mine, if I already have gone through a tunnel, I put a pillar of blocks in front of it to signal that I've already been there. Where it is So if I don't put a pillar of blocks there, I might think I've never been there and I could backtrack where there's not any ore. But marking it, and instead of just cutting it off completely, I mark it so that if I ever want to go back and you know mine some stone or see if there's any coal that I missed, because I skip by coal a lot, then I can go in one of those tunnels and I know it's clear of most other things. Or at least clear enough. But if there's a place I haven't been to, like that little jimmy jam room up there then i don't mark it and i just continue uh forward see this place i've basically all been to and that's how i like marking my uh my mines and i find it very useful for backtracking especially a mine that i go to time and time again i just find it very useful for marking cave systems and oh there's a little bit of iron that we missed i saw i smelled some iron nearby so i veered off course i have a i have an innate sense i'm a they were, <laughs> they were releasing pheromones. <laughs> That's a Latin joke because fer ferris or ferro is the Latin name for iron. And so they'd be releasing pheromones. Listen, I think it's funny. All right. These are the kind of jokes I appreciate is puns based on ancient languages. If anyone has some old Norse puns to throw at me, I would gladly appreciate them. If not then you know what? You're still cool people because that's a very niche market and I don't want to place that onus on you. Okay. So let's make a little pathway up here. Hello, friend. There's a one of our soldiers up here. I would rather not have him fall into this cavern, so into this hole. So I am going to very gently make a pathway back up. Here we are. Okay, and we're still in the Black Root Vale, obviously. There's a horse. Let's whoop, yeet it out of here. And let's call on our soldiers. Once we put this clover down, let's ready our people. So they all follow us. All right, let's see if we got all six. All six are readied up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, we could get a new black steed. I think that would look really cute. Or we could keep this spottled per this dappled person. Uh, we could go to Pinoth Gelin. But I think what we're going to do is we are going to head try and head to Doran Arneel. And I think our best bet is to go to Ethring. And then head south from there. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a little travel party with our friends. Go to Doran Arneel. See if we can have a party with all of our friends over there. Our fellow Gondorian people. I think that sounds like a solid bet. And we'll just follow the road. Again, this is probably going to be another travel montage episode. Just like we did from going from Dale to the Iron Hills. But at least we have friends to keep us company. And if there's any orcs that we see. Because we are going to be passing from Lamadon into mainland Gondor. And as we know, in mainland Gondor, orcs do spawn. So, if we come to a combat encounter where we encounter any orcs that want to mess us up, I will document it, and I will I will show you how our levy men fight in these times, and if they're the soldiers that we need them to be, or that I really hope they are, so I don't lose my investment of money. Because Farmon was more than an investment. He really was a soldier that I really wanted to train up to be an elite guard of our tower. But these guys... They're scrappy. They have yet to prove themselves under their leader. What is it? Arnborn? What's your What's your name? Is it Arnborn? Hold on a second. Onborn, yeah. 
they have yet to prove themselves under the leadership of Onborn. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for them to prove themselves, and then I will regard them as near equals, subordinates to the Farmon Core. Farmon Core, like the core of Farmon, I think would be a cool name for my army, but Farmon Core just sounds like Farm Encore, like if you're performing some country music and they want you to do another song, so it's a Farm Encore. And there seems to be a Lavadon village here. Interesting. So it seems that villages in Gondor don't only spawn in the Gondorian and Pelennor Fields biomes. It seems that they spawn here as well. I wonder what the building style is. It seems very similar right now to typical Gondorian stuff. Uh, this rich house has a stone roof, which is interesting. And here's these Lamadon people with the round shields. Man, I like your shields. They're really cool. Let's see if there's a blacksmith that we can use, actually. Because I would, because I don't think there's going to be armor pieces in Gondorian homes. At least not that I remember. Yeah, there's not any. There's some iron, though. And some bread. I'll take that. Materials. Iron. Yeah, I just got over a stack of iron. I think that'll be enough to supply all our units. Okay, so not a lot of armor here. There doesn't seem to be a blacksmith. Uh, that was a rich person's house. Maybe they have. Maybe other rich people have more armor and stuff in their chests, but I doubt it. I'd rather just keep going south to Tor, Do Dor, and Arneel. I keep saying Tor and Arneel. Man, Dor and Arneel. There we go. And then, until then, we're just gonna keep moving. That village was kind of neat. It's not worth our time though. Fairfell is the best village, obviously. It's in the middle of the Pelennor Fields. It's in the shadow of Minas Tirith. And it is at risk. Because it's so close to Mordor, the Pelennor Fields. It's something we have it's something we have to protect. There's a Lamadon people. Hello friends, how are you doing? Yada yada. Let's go into this tower, see if there's any loot for our for our little friends, for our teammates, for our soldiery. Maybe. Come on. Let's see. Got anything for us? Move. Arrows. Oh, that's all welcome. Hardy Gondorian spear. And we already have a lanceman. And he has a legendary lance. So he is the best. And I'm pretty sure that when he dies, he'll drop it. So we won't have to worry about losing it. That's very morbid to think. But it's something we have to consider. It's that he could die with that lance in his hand. I mean, hold on. Where is he? Just look at him. Look at him. He has white hair, got a little scruff on his beard, and he's just wearing gambeson. I gave him, I basically gave him a lance that is better forged than most elvish equipment, and he is just like, I don't know, he could have been a grocer in his former life before being conscripted. And I'm like, here, take this, and give him this uber powerful weapon. It's so funny. Imagine it. Okay, let me put you in a scenario real quick. You're living in Gondor. You're living in the Lam in Lamadon. It's well defended by the mountains. You're not anywhere near Pelennor Fields. Mordor um, affects your other countrymen more, but you're relatively safe. Um, you work maybe tending to rose bushes. Maybe you work in an orchard and you grow plums for a living and you sell plum kvass. You sell... Uh, plum preserves, you sell prunes to old people who have a hard time with better bowel movements. You are a plum salesman. That's what you do. And your family has been plumbers for generations. You're in your plum farm. And then the call comes out. There are soldiers needed. It seems that Mordor has put up more of a fight than you thought. And they are encroaching on Gondorian lands, striking the very heartland of men. So... You are called into action. You gather. I am going to take this Athelus and put it in my nature. There we go. You gather whatever resources you have. You have an old bronze battle axe. That's a family heirloom. You grab your bronze battle axe. Well, actually, no. This guy had a pike beforehand. So you grab a pike that you usually use to hunt boar. But now you're using it as an actual weapon. You... Buy some gambeson to put on yourself to protect yourself. 
It won't. It's no true Gondorian plate armor of a professional soldier, but it's enough to protect your vital organs. You go in, you don't have a helmet, you report to the fortress um, that's in Imloth Nelui. It's a grand fortress led by a commander, and the commander says, all right, you're going to be on retain in this fortress, and if any commander comes to you, you're going to have to follow him. So... You hang around this fortress for a little bit, not doing too much. You're pretty safe. The soldier life is kind of boring. You thought you'd see more excitement. And then, one day, some bloke from out of the blue comes up. He is decked. Hold on. Here you go. He is. He wears a dwarven chest piece, but he's not a dwarf. He wears a Gondorian helmet, so he seems to be an ally. And yet, he has a strange look about him. He gallops into the fortress on a horse... He rides up to directly to the commander and says, I need men. He doesn't go for the soldiers, though. He doesn't even go for fellow riders that can keep up with him on his horse. Instead, he chooses you and five other levy men, one of which is a sergeant, let's say. a cap uh, Not a captain of the guard, but more like a sergeant who's, been, who's seen some battle before and has some good equipment from it for his trouble, uh, from his military pay. So this guy throws money at the commander, and the commander says, all right, you, 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 and then points to you. And then you are told that you are to enter the service of this strange fellow that entered the fortress. You leave with him immediately, and instead of heading east towards Mordor, you start heading west, further into the Gondorian mainland. You wonder what this could be. Has Mordor really come this far? I mean, this man just strode into the command office and got and was asking for soldiers quite quickly. There must be some emergency. So you gear up, you're ready to face your first battle. And then, when you get to the White Mountains and you take the mountain pass, you seem to be going towards the Blackroot Vale. And as you go forward, you the strange man goes into the towers that hold the tower guard of the Beacon Towers that will alert Gondor if they're in aid. You think... Okay, maybe he's going to light the beacons. Maybe he has to go in and alert the tower guard. But he doesn't go up to the top of the tower. Instead, what he does is he goes into the living quarters of the tower and takes armor scraps that he can find and then gives them to your commander, to your sergeant. And then he goes to another tower, takes its armor pieces, and gives it to another person. And again, and again, he never gives any to you. But now he's beginning to dole out weapons. And at first he gives you a spear. And uh, you see him all well and good with that. But then he does something strange. He gives you a beautifully crafted black wood pike. With a beautiful handle. And you see his edge is so keen. You could maybe shave with it if it didn't have such a long handle. It is a magnificent weapon. And he gives it to you. Not to the captain. But to you, and you wonder why, you wonder why you were chosen for this honor. And then he gives you a cool helmet while telling the story to himself, because he's a kind of a crazy man who talks to himself. But never mind that, it seems he trusts you enough to carry on legacy of this beautiful weapon that you don't know where exactly he got it from, but it seems like this weapon was safeguarded inside of a tower. You wonder how it came into that tower, and why it was safeguarded there. But now he carries you forward. And now you head south. You figure you're maybe going to the coast. Part of you wants to believe that you're going to do something against the enemies of Gondor. Maybe you're going along the coast to intercept Umbarin raiders. Umbaric raiders. Maybe to fight some Mordor orcs that are striking along the coast with the Hard Eye Dream. But more than likely, more than likely... You are probably going to go loot some more towers. And, lo and behold, that's exactly what happens. You wonder if this guy is even allowed to hire units like you. Anyway, that's my scenario. What would you guys do in this situation? Would you keep going with this weird man? Or would you say, you know what? I think I'm going to defect. I think I'm just going to change my lame and live in a farm village and hope no one comes to collect my taxes. And that'll be that. I think that I would probably do the latter as well. I think that's what I would do. There's a farm. There's no blacksmith, it seems. 
There's a market. Wonder what they sell in the market. What you got? You are a baker? And you are a farmer? 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 Uh, Ecthelion, the Gondor farmer. And I can hire Gondor farmhands. That'd be pretty useful eventually. I think that'd be pretty cool. Our farms are very segmented, segmented, so I don't think a Gondorian farmhand would be the best. Is this a blacksmith? No, this is some kind of stable. Hmm. Some iron, some leather. That's pretty good. And a iron shovel. That's also pretty good. Okay, let's put our... Where's the nature? Nature, there we go. You're going in here. You are becoming torches. And materials, you're going in here. Alright. Alright, let's go back forward to... Dor and Arneel. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Life isn't all that grim. Oh man, I wish I could mount these guys. I wish these guys could learn how to ride horses. Because then they could be my elite uh, donkey cavalry. That'd be so funny. Imagine, you're an orc. You're told by your master, who you basically worship out of fear, that it's time to smack some humans around. Alright, whatever. You got plenty of you. You outnumber them. You march in with your gaggle of goons. And then, out of nowhere, some human, some Tark, with a fancy elvish sword, riding on a horse shows up, begins charging at you. You think, this guy's crazy, and then he has a cavalry. But instead of hearing neighs and hoofbeats, you hear, yee-haw, yee-haw, as a legion of donkeys stomp along the ground, not wearing any armor, but covered in chests. They're laden, they're very slow, but they're making their way towards you, slowly but surely. You fire into them, arrow after arrow. Um, the donkeys, some of them fall. Some of their riders fall off the donkeys. But the donkeys just keep coming. Their leader seems to inspire them closer and closer to him with every charge. What madness is this? Who is this Tark? And how is he leading all these men to their sure death? With the power of this beautiful elvish blade. And what sorcery does he use to command this donkey cavalry? I think Donkey Cavalry would be the best meme. I hope Donkey Cavalry can exist. That'd be so great. If any of you guys want to make a Lord of the Rings Minecraft mod server for this version of the Lord of the Rings Minecraft mod, which I think is 36.4 or 35.4. One of those two. It's either 35 or 36.4. Then, uh, and, we can, and if we can get a lot of people on the server, we can form a Donkey Cavalry to smack people with. That'd be pretty fun. If any of you guys could do that, I will pay some of the server costs because I would love the thought of doing a donkey cavalry. That'd be really fun. But I think it would be ineffective, but imagine the meme potential. It would be endless. But memes notwithstanding, there's some Athelis. We need that. I think we should give our troops like one ration of Athelis each. Imagine if you were able to make Athelis brew into a splash potion. You just add some gunpowder to the barrel. <laughs> where you have like all Athlas and then gunpowder. Where it might be a little weaker, but you're able to throw it at your soldiers. Like, hey, go get him, champ. Smack. The mug uh, is flung at their head. And they end up getting rejuvenated and ready for battle. That'd be so late. That'd be so lazy. Instead of actually giving your people good equipment. You just stand there spamming potions at them. I think you could maybe make another portal in the Lord of the Rings mod, and then I could go to the Nether, then go to here, the Lord of the Rings, uh, Middle Earth. Well, now that begs the question: if I'm in Middle Earth and I make another portal, I go into the Nether. If I go out of the Nether, do I end up back in the Overworld? And if so, where would I be? Does it follow the perfect x and y coordinates from where I was? Maybe. Because, hold on, let's think about this. Let's say I'm at X, uh, 58,000, 73,000. Would that put me there? Uh, in the overworld? And if so, if I make another ring portal directly into there, would I spawn? Like, if I make a ring portal 
in the overworld, it'll teleport me to Hobbiton, basically. Can I make a direct portal? Because I know there's a way to make a portal to and from the overworld uh, in Lord of the Rings, and it uses Edelvir and... Yeah, it uses Edelvir, which has a new star texture. It uses um, grass and elven flowers. But I don't think there's another way... I don't think there's another way to get to the overworld other than making another portal and dipping back out. But then it would be hard to get back into Middle-earth, especially if you want to be somewhere where you were just at. Like, if I make another portal right here, step in and then step out, I don't know if I'll be able to go back to the same spot. I don't think it'll be possible. Or if it is, it'd be very unlikely. Okay, that was a cavern. That was pretty dicey. We're almost in Doran Arneal. That one took way shorter time than I expected. I expected it to take a lot longer. But it seems like we're almost there. Wow. That must be what? Uh, 5,000 blocks? Interesting. I thought it would be a lot longer. Maybe I'm mistaken. Or maybe I just remember it being longer because the last time I did this route... I think I took this exact same route to Doran Arneal during my first like, real Gondorian-centric playthrough. And I think it took... So long to get to Doran Arneal. Maybe because I was fighting orcs the whole way. Probably. That's probably the case. Anyway, we're almost there. I think Doran Arneal is, has swans and swan knights. The swan knights are basically winged hussars if you guys are a fan of history. Oh, good. Uh, Mortar orcs. Time to screw them up. Prove your metal, men. Will I lose any members? No, the orcs seem all aggro to me. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got this. You got this. Yeah! You guys are dope! Oh, Damron! See, I knew that lance would come in handy. My man, Dam Damrod. You are going somewhere great. You guys are good. Once you outnumbered them, you did really well. I applaud you for that. And now you guys are healing. It seems like their passive healing rate is pretty high. Yeah, wow, that's pretty good. So as long as you keep them alive and maybe make them skirmish between battles, it'll work out. Okay, let's take care of any guys that have battle axes or warhammers first. Because those will do the most damage against our guys. So as long as we distract them, I think we'll be fine. Okay, go at it, sisters. Okay, get away from my friend. Man, you're on the front line. Oh no! He was slain! Thorongil! And he was the guy that I gave the Gondorian chestplate. That sucks. So these orcs know how to focus their targets. Well, we lost one of our company men, but we extirpated those pests from our lands. A moment of silence for a fallen comrade. Alright, moment of silence over. Let's go back. Alright, do you guys want to... Okay, so... That begs the question. Who wants his sword? 6.5 damage. Seems pretty good. Yo, guys are good. You have an iron sword. I'm going to give you something better. Here. You. Get this. That will be a little better for you. A little bit longer reach. Just kidding. It has normal reach. But it looks longer. And it's also Gondorian in make. You don't know where that iron sword came from. Did you make it yourself? Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, no. These Gondorian levies need help, too. To battle! We did it! Alright guys, let's keep going. Let's get these poosers off our land. Come on, help them out. Good job. Assist your captain. You guys are great. You guys are great combatants. Oh, this guy has a bow. Take him out. Take him out. Take him out. Take him out. Good job, guys. I knew you could do it. Oh, this guy dropped human bone, not orc bone. That's a little strange. I expect him to drop drop orc bone. Okay, it's fine. Let's keep going. We're almost at door. We are in Doran Arneal. Oh gosh, our troops—they're getting waylaid. Oh, they can hit. They're handling themselves. Come on, yeah, Dwelin. What a good guy. I knew you could do it. Oh, we're in the lands of the prince now. Look at these soldiers. With their bright blue eyes and black hair. 
Look at their winged helmets. If you want to make like a Thor build for this mod, you should use this helmet with a maybe a Dalish Warhammer and you'll basically get what you're going for. That's really cool. All right, let's keep going though. I think um, we're going to go to the top of this ridge and then we'll explore Dorn Arneal a little bit. It's pretty fun. Uh, it seems our people are really good. And oh boy, here we are. Here's a swan knight. These guys are beautiful. All right. This is what you have to aspire to, lads. One day, you'll be just like this swan knight. Complete and amazing armor. Well, as I've said before, don't listen to Noldor propaganda. The kinslang was not justified. I'll see ya.